Hey, hey, what's up, rock stars, and welcome to another awesome episode of Rock Talk. Pew, 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 pew. Even though the last one was technically released after the new year, this is, in my opinion, in my mind, technically the first video of 2020 because it's it's an actual video. Anyway, today we're gonna be doing something super awesome and super cool that you can even do at your own home. Um, assuming that you also have parental supervision if you're under the age of a certain age um, because we're handling dry ice and stuff and that can be kind of dangerous. But other than that, it's using stuff that you mostly have in your own home because we're gonna be making a comet. That's right, a comet, wow. we're going to be using all the same ingredients that comets are made of to create, recreate rather, the nucleus of a comet. Now, what is the nucleus of a comet? What even is a comet? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh my gosh, it's all just star stuff. It's all just star stuff, all of it, all of it. We're all just star stuff. That being said, um, or to elaborate on that a little bit, as Carl Sagan said, to kind of go into deeper that quote of us all being star stuff, that is to say that stars are the original um, kind of ovens, baking kilns of the universe that bake down the basic building blocks of hydrogen and helium and, and squish them down into more and more complex atoms and more and more complex elements and explode them out in the universe. And that was how our solar system was formed. And all of these accretionary gases and, 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 and debris form together and they form planets and planetoids and it's all made of the same stuff. Comets are just the leftover dredges. They're like the little itty bitty bits and little blops and blips of material that don't quite make it into being a planet or a moon or a star or some other kind of thing. So they're just kind of these, these wanderers that wander the galaxy, not quite necessarily tied to a star, even though some of them are, a lot of them are. And they just kind of wander around bumping into stuff and, and it's, it's totally crazy. But because they're made of all the same stuff that you can find on Earth, We'll just take normal Earth stuff, like in your own home, to make a comet. It's super awesome, super easy, and super fun. So let's get to it, rock stars. First thing you're gonna need is a bin of basin to put all your equipment in, and then a plastic bag. None of these are going into the actual ingredients of our comet, but it's nice, because this is going to be quite a dirty experiment, what we like to call dirty science. <laughs> so the first you wanna get that all, get that all set up. Now, nickname of a comet is called a dirty ice ball and um, that's because it's made out of as you guessed it ice and dirt so the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need some dirt now this is just plain ordinary regular old beach sand trademark um so we just want a little bit of a little bit of beach sand now the sand here is taking the place of rocks and other kinds of, of rocky kind of kinds of kinds of things, iron and other kind of minerals that get ejected out of supernovas and stuff and float around space. It's not quite the same exact rocks as here on Earth because some of our rocks undergo changes in weathering, but it's it's a close analogy. It's a close it's a close fit. And oh, we also have some straight up just some regular dirt as well. And that's the dirt in our dirty ice ball. Get some, get some dirt in there. Get some, a, little bit, a little bit of dirt. All right, awesome. And additionally to the dirt and the rocks, we're also going to want to get some carbon compounds. Now we have a couple different kinds of carbon compounds or carbon-based compounds. Ugh. First off, we just got some charcoal. Let's get straight up run-of-the-mill at home charcoal because that's just got a lot of carbon in it quite a bit of carbon in comets, which is interesting. And it's interesting in ways that I want to go into here in a little bit. We can elaborate on that in a little bit. So we're just gonna mix around some of our dry ingredients before we get into some of the wet ingredients. But now is time for one of my favorite ingredients. It is the ice in the dirty ice ball equation, rock stars. And that's right, we're talking about not run of the mill ice, not wet ice. We're talking about dry ice. This is the part of the experiment that can be a bit dangerous. So um, for all those listening, all the young and the old and the super young, the super old, the super young old, you know, cause you know, children ages, ages nine through 95 or whatever that Christmas song is, you're gonna wanna wear gloves when handling dry ice. Dry ice is not water ice, it's actually carbon dioxide. It is so unbelievably cold that it can 
burn your skin. It's not actually a fire burn, it's an ice burn. It's gonna actually burn through your skin. So you absolutely do not ever want to handle this with your bare hands. I can feel how cold it is just by holding, just by holding it, it's crazy. Now, in the vacuum of space, carbon dioxide gets compressed in, in such a way that it, it's just naturally floating around like this. But on Earth, Earth has such conditions that are warm enough and hot enough that we don't get solid carbon dioxide. We don't even get liquid carbon dioxide. We only have the gas that floats around. When you breathe out, oh, it's carbon dioxide that you're exhaling. And as you can see here, it's not melting. This ice, ice will never melt. It will never ever turn to water or turn to a liquid because it is sublimating. Sublimating means it is turning straight from a solid into a gas. So we can sit here and wait all day until the cows come home and it's just gonna get smaller and smaller as it's just kind of gaseous and just kind of, just kind of, just kind of, just kind of floats away. <clears throat> so before that happens though, we're gonna put it into our little bag here. Into our little bag here. And in the first will it smash of the year, we're gonna find out, will this smash? Oh yeah, it totally smashes. We're gonna get some nice pulverized little bits going. It's getting like... Let's hold the bag up, because the bag is, is steaming. I don't know what's going on. Okay, move on. Moving on. So if I actually reach in here, and then I can take out and examine a little piece of dry ice. <clears throat> something cool you can do is assuming you have all of your safety equipment in check here um, it's nice to do a little bit of um, experiments here because dry ice is so unbelievably cold it interacts with things in an interesting way let me see like right here you can do this with a quarter or other pieces of metal the metal is so hot relative to the dry ice that as it sublimates the little air bubbles get trapped in the metal and it gets that squeaking noise. Ah, there we go. Fascinating. Oh man. All right, she's gonna toss it over there. Whoops, oh, oh. All right, watch out, heads up. Um, all right, and so we've got our dry ice. And so we're gonna bring in our bucket back and then add some of this to our dry ice. What the heck went on? Dumping. We're up on the whole thing in here. All right. And so these are some pretty common, pretty, pretty easy to think of ingredients. Now it's time for some of the more obscure ingredients. Things that you maybe didn't know or realize were in comets. Things like, for example, ugh, ammonia. Ammonia, which is the primary ingredient in most glass cleaners, like um, our non-branded, non-branded glass cleaner here, is very common. What? I was just covering the label. Oh, oh yeah, no, yeah, don't, don't wanna, don't look, don't look, keep, don't look, don't going. look. <clears throat> this video not sponsored by Windex, but maybe it could be. Hey, who knows? Head us uh, up. <laughs> all right. But yes, uh, ammonia, common ingredient in comments in space, and so we're just gonna. It's gonna spray us up. Some ammonia's in here. Wow. It smells so clean. And so fresh, fresh. So fresh, fresh, and so clean. And then we've got probably the most interesting ingredient of them all, amino acids. And that's right, you can find liquid aminos at your uh, grocery store. It's the same exact place you can actually buy dry ice in case you didn't know. And uh, these little guys are also found in comments, which is fascinating because Amino acids are some of the building blocks for life. That's right. The proteins and other kinds of, of uh, microscopic ingredients necessary for cellular life and for multicellular life are found in amino acids. That's the thing that makes up proteins and the whole entire shebang. It's nuts. And scientists studying comets think and at least a popular theory is that these amino acids present in comets, the very ingredients here bombarded early earth and brought a lot of the building blocks to earth necessary for making life happen. So comets are not only these terrestrial 
wayward explorers out there in space floating around. It's also probably the entire reason there's life on Earth in the first place, which is kind of crazy. All right, okay, so we got, we got just a, just a whole big mess of stuff here. So now comes the, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. get ready though. This next part's gonna be crazy. All right, now for our last ingredient, plain old quality H2O. Mm. Mm. That is some quality H2O. This is the last ingredient of forming our comet, and this is where things are gonna get kind of messy. So be sure when you're doing this part, if you're doing this part at home, be sure to make sure that you're not gonna you're not gonna get it on anything. All right, so whenever you're ready, you just gotta start pouring it in. Oh, this is the part that gets kind of. You gotta take it. And the point, you gotta squeeze all your ingredients together. You gotta squeeze them all together into a little ball. Oh, I hope this works out. Ugh, this is what we call Dirty science, rock stars. Why, you'll see in just a minute. You gotta squeeze it. You really gotta squeeze the turd out of it. But comets have been the focus of many intergalactic, or at least interstellar, in the, yeah, inter interstellar experiments. There was that rover that was launched onto a comet, and, and that was completely unprecedented. I'm gonna put up some pictures here in just a minute about, that, that, sh that show high definition images of the surface of a comet. So cool that that was able to happen. Absolutely fascinating that these things are out there floating around. Um, average size of a comet is about the size of an American city. A comet could easily completely consume Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. And then there are other ones that are, you know, pretty tiny. This, there are, in some cases, comets the size of our little comet here in this bag. So they range in all kinds of sizes and shapes as well. Comets are very rarely spherical in shape. They do not have a, a mass of gravity large enough to form them into a, a sphere. And that is actually a very big indicator of whether or not we call something a planet or not. If it is large enough to be formed into a sphere based off of its own gravity. But anyway, without further ado, I think we're ready. So let's see here We've, what our comet looks like, rock stars. Whew, look at that. Let's get this, get this up and out of here. Look at this. Wow. So I'm gonna hold this right here. And then side by side, gonna get a get a picture of some of our high definition comets here. And you can you can tell, I'll let you decide how close we got to making an actual comet. Now you see here, you see all these little bubbles, all this degassing happening from the trapped carbon dioxide in these comets. Actual comets do this, they do this degassing, especially when they get closer and closer to our sun. It is a very common thing that happens. And actually, as comets get close to the sun, the sun's solar rays, the solar radiation, pummels, pummels it, and this gas actually ends up igniting and, and turning into um, all different kinds of colors based off of the plasma um, of the ingredients of that comet. That's what forms the comet's tail, the long tail that forms out into space that yet yeah, you see. This nucleus is actually a very small part of what we actually visibly see of the comet. Most of it are these gases and these um, other materials that are ejected off of the comet due to the solar winds. And that is how we know what comets are made of. Astronauts and astronomers study what those colors are, and it works like a spectrometer. We're able to read what the ingredients are of that comet based off of the different colors associated of the tail itself, which is fascinating. That's how we know so much about these things without really being able to know that much. It's absolutely wild. And I think it's pretty cool. And um, you know, this is just a really cool experiment, rock stars, that I hope you get the chance to do at home. Just again, be sure to be very careful. Dry ice is very, very dangerous. So do not do this without an adult supervision. 
um, for all you younger rock stars out there. So do be careful, but do have a lot of fun. It smells kind of like soy sauce, I don't know. I'm not sure if, 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 if they actually smell like soy sauce, but we'll leave that up to you, rock stars. Enjoy, have an awesome, awesome time with this one. And um, you know, we are hurtling into 2020 rock stars like a comet, so let's do it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you'd like me to see me pummel some dinosaur toys with this comet, tune into the video up there. We'll see you next time.